episode 3450, I will. Moms, it's time to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew who you are in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, the show to help you do just that. Here's your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Happy every day and welcome to the weekend. Can you believe it? It's actually here. That means you get to take a breath. Oh, wait, maybe not. Maybe you're on vacation. Maybe you're traveling. You know what? I hope you're just enjoying some nice weather where you can be outside with family and just enjoying the atmosphere. But you know what? It's relationship builders. Are you ready? I will. For those of you who are brand new to Create Your Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted of your presence. If you already haven't had the opportunity, you want to head on over to createyournow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kisses newsletter, the Keep It Simple Strategy, Everyday Solutions to Live, Love, and Impact. Well, this episode is brought to you by AIM, Inspiring Connection and Community. You know, I like to think that everybody's perfect. <laughs> But we know we're not. But isn't it a kind of a nice fleeting thought that, gosh, if we were only perfect? And if we were only perfect, we wouldn't have to worry about relationships. That's why relationships are hard. It doesn't matter if it's marriage. It doesn't matter if you're dating. It doesn't matter if it's kids and parents' relationships. It doesn't matter if it's in-laws' relationships. Relationships as a whole are challenging. Why? Because you have people who come from a different point of view, a different aspect. They have different experiences, different situations, different circumstances, different beliefs, different ethics and background and knowledge. And the list goes on and on and on. Yet in marriage, right, two are joined to become one. And you wonder how well is that working? And for a lot of us, it's not. That's why many end up in divorce. Many end up separated. And a lot of times it's truly because of a major factor and it's communication. There's just this breakdown because for whatever reason, we seem to have this intention that we need to defend ourselves all the time. Can I just be real with you for a minute? Oh, wait, I'm always real with you. So let me be extra real. You're not always right. I'm not always right. And we don't like to hear that because even when I say that out loud to you right now, I'm like, it's like, it's just this little golf ball gulp in my throat. And I'm like, "Ah, but I try, I do try. But that doesn't mean that there's not another perspective, another way to look at things. I love to use this analogy. My kids were little and I wanted them to do chores and we never really called them chores. We didn't. We didn't pay our kids. Some people would say, what? Nope, we didn't. It was an expectation that you're part of this family, you're going to do it, period, end of story. So regardless if it's right or wrong, doesn't matter, that's how we did it. But one time I was teaching, I don't remember which child it was, how to do the dishes. And I'm like, I need you to do the dishes. And so I showed them the way to do it and they did the dishes. Well, I come back and the dishes weren't done the way I wanted them done. Hmm. But guess what? They were done. In the end, they were clean. Were they done the exact way I wanted them? No. But was the end result the same? Yes. There are so many different ways to do the dishes. But for whatever reason, we cling to the one that we like. It's our habit. It's our way of doing things. In marriage, you can't have everybody stay and do only what they want to do. There's got to be some middle ground. Because if not, guess what? You're going to have some arguments. And we all have them. We just deal with our arguments differently. Maybe some avoid the whole idea of I don't want confrontation, so I'm just not going to say anything. Well, I guarantee you an argument will come up later. If arguments and heated discussions seem more of the norm than gentleness and kindness in marriage, how do you get from blaming your spouse from moving towards I will? You know, in every relationship, right? And here we're specifically talking about marriage, but you can take this to other relationships. There comes a point where the usual bickering and misunderstandings can take a toll. And you're like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm finished. The idea of forever suddenly feels way too heavy. And the once bright future ahead can start to look so dim. 
And for many couples, finding themselves in a cycle of blame and frustration is not uncommon. You get into this tornado of, yep, it's your fault. Nope, it's your fault. Nope, it's your fault. Nope, it's your fault. But really, you're pointing at the other person, which really you should be pointing at yourself because it's your fault. I will get to there in a minute. Because I know you got bills, you got responsibilities, kids, career, you got pets, you got the in laws. That's just to name a few. That's called life. The pressure is real, isn't it? And the thing is, with us being so connected through technology, there is no mental break. There's a breakdown or a break up, but there's not a break. Everything is always in your face, especially if you use social media and are not just on it for entertainment, right? I know for me, I just recently, I know you're probably going to be shocked. I tried some reels. Seriously, I am not a real girl. I'm, I'm a real girl, but not a real girl. <laughs> so that's a R-E-A-L versus the R-E-E-L. And I was like, all right, let's just see. I'm kind of doing some remodeling with the house and I just want to find a few things. And Pinterest was driving me crazy. Don't ask me about Pinterest. Anyway, I think I mess up all algorithms in the world. I do. I touch technology and it blows up in my face, but we'll leave that for another episode. Anyway, I decided, okay, let's see what I can find out here on Reels. All I want to do is find some master bathroom, you know, just kind of some inspiration. I want to get an idea. I want to kind of see some things. I know what's in my head, but I want to see if I can find it actually out there or coming close to it to see if maybe I am really crazy about this whole idea. So I go and I search on Reels. And I'm like, okay, I can see how this is entertaining. And a couple times I felt myself just giggling so loud, outbursts. I'm like, and that's why my husband watches this crazy stuff. It can be addicting. It really can. You can use it as entertainment. That's great. But if you're one who gets on there because you're snooping in all your friend's stuff, and then you're like, okay, well, I got to post something that's even better. So what am I going to post? Because I got to look really good. Even though it's really bad right now in our household, I'm just going to make it look really, really good. I'm thinking of actually, by the way, documenting my whole renovation thing and seeing what it does. I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably have some lessons in that, I'm sure. But you see, everything's always in our face because of technology. Technology is a great tool, right? Because of technology, you and I can come together right here, right now. When we open up AIM, we get to come together even more, right? We're going to have this other little secret thing that allows us not to be on social media. Yep. But we get to communicate as if we are on social media. But we don't have to worry about the ads. We don't have to worry about little peeping Toms. It's all in a safe, secure environment. So I'm so excited about that. But, you know, it's just kind of the the give and take that we have, right, of technology. It can be great, but it can be horrible. It can really wear on marriages. And that's when the water gets murky. The comparison jumps out often and second guessing becomes your go-to. Why did I even get myself into this situation? Why did I even marry this man? Why did I even decide to, you know, go and move 2,000 miles away? Why am I in, whatever your situation is. And all of a sudden, you start playing that tune in your head. Well, that tune comes out in the way you address your spouse, the way you love your spouse, the way you forgive or not forgive your spouse, the way you serve meals to your spouse, the way you interact around your children with your spouse. I mean, it all plays a role. Yet in the midst of these challenges, there's hope. I'm telling you. There lies a simple but powerful shift that can change everything. It's a shift from pointing fingers to saying, I will. That is your kiss to keep it simple strategy. I will. That's as simple as it can get. You thought I do was hard. Now it's I will. Navigating the rough waters of a troubled marriage can be daunting, right? It is a challenge beyond challenges, but it's essential to remember that change starts within. Look at who you are in the relationship. Who are you showing up as? I'm just calling it like it is, right? Sometimes we can be great and sometimes we can be a really big jerk. So instead of focusing on what your partner isn't doing, try to shift your story that you're telling yourself to what you can do to make things better. 
It's a small shift in perspective that can lead to significant transformations in your marriage. But I'm here to tell you this. It takes work. It takes effort, energy. It takes consistency. It takes you being vulnerable. It takes openness. It takes gratitude and unconditional love. You can't forget forgiveness. There's a lot of reflection that goes into it. It takes determination. It takes empathy, humility, and kindness. It takes you, my friend, wanting to become better than who you think you are. Let that soak in for a minute. Because if you're on social media and you're comparing yourself to your friends or your other family members or even strangers, that we do the strangest things as human beings. We just do. We are weird, okay? We want to be top dog, but we can't always be top dog because there's always going to be somebody better. Okay, there's always going to be, if you want to be a millionaire, guess what? There's going to be someone who's a million and one millionaire, right? Then there's going to be one who's that million and one. Oh, I'm going to get to that. And you become the millionaire and two dollar one, right? But there's going to be one that's going to be a million and three. It, It goes on and on and on. We can sit here and say, I want all these accolades in my career. I need all these recognitions. Great. But guess what? There's going to be one other person that's going to go one step beyond. Comparison just absolutely robs all the possibilities within a marriage. And if you let that creep in and you think that you are better than thou, seriously, then you got problems. And I want to tell you honestly, if you really have that sincere attitude and it's not just kind of flip it, but you're like, yeah, I know I've done all my work. I'm good. I am going to ask you to go seek professional licensed counseling. Go see a therapist. Go see a certified life coach, marriage coach. Seriously. Not someone who's just going to talk the talk, but someone who understands. Someone who can take you through things. Because let me tell you, if you think you're better than your spouse... We're not talking about abuse here. We're not talking about that, oh, my spouse is treating me wrong and abusing me. And all. No, 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 no. No, we're not talking about physical, emotional. We're not talking about that, okay? We're talking about average, everyday people who are married, may or may not have kids, but in my opinion, we've got kids. And we've got little four-legged creatures. Some have more land than others. Some live in an apartment. Some live in a house. But hopefully, we do have four walls around us with a roof over our head, Okay, that's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about here. And if you're thinking that you are better than thou compared to your spouse, you will always have a problem in your marriage. You will. Because neither of you are perfect. And you can't sit here and say, oh, but I'm, you know, I might lack right here, but I make up for it all over here. Nope, doesn't work that way. You got to be even keel across the board. So you've got to want to become better than who you think you are. And that means you're putting yourself in your place. You are now on timeout, as we would tell the kiddos, right? You have got to focus on the person you can control. And that's you. My friend, only you can control you. No one else can. So you got to look in the mirror. Now, I have a big warning for you, and it's a big one. I want to do like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Like we should have the big sirens out. But the warning is this. Be careful who you talk to when asking for their opinions. If you have people who can't see all sides, then they are more likely to say, huh, there's nothing wrong with you. You're doing everything right. Your spouse is the one with the problem. I don't know what, what you're thinking or what your problem is. I don't know why you guys even have these arguments. I mean, you're right. That naturally leads you to think that you have nothing to change, right? And I'm here to tell you, everyone has things that need to change. Hence, if you are so bent that you are not in the wrong, then you definitely need to go seek counseling. I'm serious. Because this is what we have and this becomes the breakdown in marriage. It's not just communication. It becomes what? 
something inwardly. And your spouse can't control that. And that means you're adding to the problem. Now, I know this is a lot to take in. You're thinking, gosh, Christiane, on a holiday weekend, yeah, it's, it's fireworks, baby. And you got fireworks in your marriage? Let me tell you right now, they're not going to go away if you ignore them. You want to have the right sparks flying in your marriage. You want to have the right heat happening. So if you're one who says, okay, I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to start. I do think sometimes I am better in some cases. Okay, that's fine. That's natural. We all have our pluses and minuses. It's when you say, oh, no, I'm not the one at fault. I have concluded that I'm not the one that has the problem. Then you have the problem. And you are very much a part of the problem, okay? And there are a lot of things that go back to that. It may not be something that just happened yesterday or the day before. It could go as far back as your childhood. That's why I'm telling you it's important to seek help. And not from your mom or your dad, not from someone who you're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to go here because they, you know, they said they're really good and they've helped other people. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because most people cannot see all sides and they're going to mislead you and they're going to give you information that isn't going to help you. So I want to give you information here, though, that can help you. And again, you've got to take this just like you would from anything else and really look at it and say, okay, what part of this can I take to implement? Number one, be kind before opening your mouth. Be kind before opening your mouth. Basically, you got to practice empathy. Before reacting to a situation, take a moment to step back and think, okay, if I was in my sweetheart's shoes, how would I feel? What would that look like? And if you're taking a step back, that doesn't mean that you're just quiet with your mouth for only like three seconds. It may mean that you don't even respond because you really need to think about it, okay? Understanding where your spouse is coming from can help you approach conflicts with a more compassionate mindset. Be kind before opening your mouth, Right? Now remember, if you're coming at it from, well, I've done nothing wrong, then there's going to be nothing but bad coming out of your mouth. And that's not good. That is just not good. It's not going to facilitate anything positive helping you all to move forward. Number two, now I'm going to say this. If you have young kids and you don't like four-letter words, it's not that kind of four-letter word. I'll just, I'll say it this way. But it's a four-letter word to me that I do not use. And I know it sounds crazy. I didn't use it when I was bringing up my kids. And if I ever did and it slipped, they knew mom was like at her pinnacle. Shut up. Shut up. Listen intently. One of the most common pitfalls in a struggling marriage is the breakdown of communication, right? We're already making that clear. But you got to make a conscious effort to listen actively to what your partner is saying without judgment. Now, listen here, because I know we've talked about this before, but seriously, effective communication involves not just talking, but truly hearing each other's feelings and needs. Now, this is what normally happens. A lot of times when our spouse is talking, right, we finish the sentences in our minds, which means we do not hear what is actually being said, and then you wonder who is muddying up the water. If you're one who's in a conversation or a heated discussion, or maybe it's a discussion that's becoming a heated discussion, which leads to an argument, if you can reverse that and rewind it for a moment and think back, not because you want to prove yourself right, okay? You really want to prove yourself as saying, okay, I really want to dig here and figure out, is it me? Maybe I do need to shut up more. And a lot of us do. Because you see what happens is, Your spouse is having this sentence and you're like, okay, I'm going to finish it. So in your mind, you interrupt it with your own thoughts. So if you've ever done editing for a paper, there's this little thing. It looks like kind of the greater sign or lesson sign, but it goes up, it points up. It's not an arrow, but it points up. So you just kind of put that little thing in there and you insert. Well, guess what you just did to your spouse? In your mind, you muted anything after their last word that you heard because you're already thinking your thought. It goes over the top. And so therefore, you think you heard what was said, but you actually didn't hear what was said. Can I just say drop the mic? 
Too many times we're inserting our own thoughts and we really don't hear what our spouse is saying. And so we're quick to push in. We're quick to prove wrong. We're quick to defend, but we're not here to love. Wow. Shut up. If we could just take that, if that's the only thing of my four-letter words that you take from me today for your fireworks, let that be the one. Shut up. When you find yourself in a conversation, do it with your kids. Do it when you're listening on the phone. If you cannot sit there and you have this nudge and this urge of like, I got to finish the sentence, you're not listening. And when I say listen, listen with your ears and watch their mouth as they move. And let there be a pause at the end of their sentence or two or three or the paragraph before you take a breath. (gasps) And then you vomit your thoughts all over them. Like, I'm serious. Because a lot of times, if we would just be quiet and let the other person talk, it would be amazing what we would learn. I know. I did this with my husband all the time. I'm not just telling you to shut up. I'm telling me. Every once in a while, I find myself doing it. Actually, I've gotten really, really good at being quiet and listening. I am a great listener. Don't get me wrong. But this is where I would, where I would really fall short. He would start talking And my thing is, is I was already four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps ahead of him. And so I was already finishing. Okay, great. I can solve that problem. Not a problem. Okay, great. Can we move on now? And I would want to jump in. Now, I didn't say that. That was in my mind. Okay. But remember, insert the little cute pointed arrow that's not an arrow, right? The editing sign. And there I pop in my thing. So was he actually being heard? No. Well, what do you think that does to him? He doesn't feel like he's being seen or heard. I just pushed him down. And if I was to do that over and over and over and over again, he gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And he doesn't think I value him. Got to be careful. Shut up. And finally, number three, be who you are becoming. This is where you got to commit to personal development. Building a strong marriage requires individual growth and self-awareness. You got to be observant of your own actions, of your own words, of your own thoughts. You got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you look like. You got to say, okay, yeah, you know, man, I'm getting hot under the collar. Why? Well, because maybe what was said is really bothering me. But should it really? What is it about that that bothers me? Dig into that a little bit deeper. Work on becoming the best version of you, right? Your best selfie, both for your sake and for the sake of your relationship, for the sake of your marriage, for the sake of the children, for the sake basically of you. Because if you become a better person, what do you think happens? It's a ripple effect for everybody. But you got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to humble yourself, right? That humility. You got to be willing to say, yep. I fall short, but not with a conceited attitude, not with like, oh, holy are thou me. Yeah, but I'll kind of bow down. I'll kind of pretend that I feel like I'm, you know, not perfect. No, that's not going to get you anywhere. Okay. You've got to be genuine. And that's the problem nowadays. Seriously. You want to know the real scoop here? The real scoop is no one wants to be genuine. Because everybody's too fake online. Therefore, they don't know who they are. And that's hard. And we wonder why we have problems in this world. Why our families are falling apart because mom and dad can't stay together. Because they don't know who they are as an individual, let alone as a couple. This is a start, my friend. This is a start. I really want to applaud you if you're one who's being honest with yourself saying, yeah, I I do fall short in these areas, Christiane. You don't have to verse them and and voice them to everybody. You don't have to go up there and say, hello, mountaintop. Everybody listen. I'm a failure right here. No, but I am telling you to be honest with your heart. Because if you're not, then what happens? You just become mean and you become bitter. And over time, that eats away. Over time, that tears apart marriages. Over time, that leaves you lonely and depressed. 
That's the real world. That's real consequences. I don't want you to get there, my friend. So embracing the whole mindset of I will allows you to take proactive steps toward rebuilding your connection as a couple and creating a more harmonious partnership. That's what it is. You want that strong foundation, but that strong foundation is built on your own foundation. You've got to be a strong individual, a loving person who can see their faults and can be willing to make changes and not say, well, you know what? I've kind of analyzed everything and yeah, I've come to the conclusion that it's not my fault. Really? Think about it. It's not about waiting for the other person to change, but taking responsibility for your own actions and choices. And yes, even if you're the one who said, "Mm, I don't have a problem, remember you do. You can only control you. When you are married, it's not about doing life one way, but coming together to create a way. You're in this journey together, my friend, and it's going to have these bumps and detours and ups and downs, and you're going to have hilt hops and valleys. But with a willingness to shift from blame to action, that's when you can navigate any storm and you can emerge stronger on the other side. I believe in you. I want you to have an absolutely beautiful marriage. But yes, it's going to take work and it starts with you. I love you so very much. I cannot wait to see you on the other side. Blessings, hugs, and lots and lots of love. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a glorious, blessed day. Bye-bye. Feeling inspired, ready to train for life, and love your journey? Visit createyournow.com for more incredible resources to help you along the way. We'll see you next time on Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie. And remember, always be sure you consult your physician before beginning any health and fitness plan.